Hello my people, my name is David and I welcome you all to my channel and today's video is based on what you guys have been longing for and I'll be showing you how to make an inverter from scratch. This is a modified sine wave inverter that can power basic home appliances and this is the switch so let me just switch it on. So I have 220 volt output and this is the oscillator. This is the MOSFET driver and this is the transformer. And I will just plug a bulb to this place to show you uh, the kind of footage that come out from it. This is an 100 watt bulb and I will just turn it on for you to see. As you can see, the inverter is working and see my meter i have is 30 to 20 volt and now i will also plug a tv to it for you to see how it works now 100 watt bulb is working and this is my tv so let me just put it on you can see the tv is working as well this is 100 watt bulb. This uh, inverter can actually power uh, up to two fans, a TV, uh, up to six energy saving bulb, and uh, a mobile phone. Of course, you can also power your laptops. So the TV is working and an 100 watt bulb is working, you can see. You can see, inverter is working, the TV is working, the bulb is working as well. Now let's go into practical, let's make this amazing inverter okay well this is my ferro board and uh, we want to do the motor driver first so i'm going to cover a section of it as my oscillator parts okay this part is for the oscillator this is my heat sink so i'm going to arrange it like this so I will tell you the reason why I'm arranging my own heat sink like this. Okay, I'm using two uh, MOSFET each. So the idea now is that I will bore a hole here for my leg of the MOSFET to enter through. Okay, before I proceed, I need to glue down my uh, each sink on the um, ferro board. Actually, if you can make holes on your ferro board, you don't. You can just use screw. You don't really need to bother yourself with this. So guys, uh, this is my MOSFET, this is the heat sink, and this is representing the heat sink here as well. So the MOSFET has three legs, but I don't need the middle leg, since the heat sink will be connected to this uh, heat sink. And then we can now pick our connection from here. You know, this, this MOSFET, the uh, metal part will be tied to this place, be screwed to this place, and we can now pick our connection from here. So I'm using two MOSFET and you can see this is the gate of the MOSFET. The source of the all the MOSFET will be connected together and it will go to the negative of my battery. Negative of my battery, then I have my gate here and here, then connected to 47 ohms or 100 ohms resistor, which this place will now be my out one. 
out one and this play will be my out two that's output one and output two now this is what i did you can clearly see that uh, the gate of the most threat i bent it upward and and i've already cut off the middle and i'm left with this leg so and i've made a hole here on the on the ferro body so this one will enter through this place then um the second one will also enter through this place so and i have a hole that I can just screw up the MOSFET right away This is the um, MOSFET driver now. You can see the two legs here, and at this side, see the two legs here as well. Now, for my connection, this is the first leg, the second leg, the third leg, the fourth leg. They will all be connected together with a very thick cable. This you can count it one, two, three, four. We connect them with a thick cable, and that will be uh, a connection to the positive and negative. Of the battery Okay, guys. Um, this is the oscillator circuit, and this is the MOSFET driver. The only additional thing I did to this MOSFET driver is that I put a 10k resistor between the uh, gates and the source of all the uh, MOSFET driver, which is uh, this this terminal. Then I have a 10k resistor here. 10k 10k of all the uh, four MOSFET 10k resistor each 10k so this is the now this is my out one this is my out two now from the oscillator I have my two diode according to the circuit I have my two diode I have a 10k resistor here, my 10k resistor here, then this capacitor, if you see the, uh, check the IC, I have a 10k resistor coming out from here, and from my pin 1, if you trace it down here, I have another 10k resistor, then from pin 6, which is this, 100k to this 50k, variable resistor then i have this uh, 104j ceramic capacitor which is this then my print 8 goes to grant then from this side i have um this uh 1k resistor this capacitor which is this and this then this uh diode i have another diode here and i have another diode here you can see it here right here then my 120k resistor here then this uh, 10 ohm resistor is actually the positive input from the battery this is it this is where my positive input don't mind this circuit this circuit is actually for automatic battery load shutdown but uh, you can just leave it for now and just this is my positive terminal 
already connected to this circuit but this positive terminal can be connected to this 10k 10 ohms resistor directly then my um 1k here 1k here is this thing i actually use 1.5k it, it still work this is my first transistors transistor and this is the second transistor so if you follow the circuit exactly the way i have it here you will get the same thing and from here i have a diode and a 1k resistor connected together and there i have my out one and out two so this is it this is the diode i'm talking about and this is the 1k resistor this is another diode right here and this is the 1k resistor and i have my out one here and out two here from the oscillator so my out one out out two will be connected to this place out one out two The positive of the oxidator goes to the switch. And the other leg of the switch goes to the positive of the battery. So I will solder it here. This place goes to the positive of the battery. This is my transformer, and this is the uh, primary side that will give me my 220 volt output. It's red and black. This is actually a UPS transformer, and this is the secondary side. I have my this is the center tap. This is uh, anode one and anode two. So I will just screw it with this bolt to. One of the anode to the to one of the heat sink. The heat sink is connected to the middle leg of the MOSFETs. Then the second anode will be connected to this the second heat sink with this uh, boat. So I'll screw that one also. So this is my negative cable coming from the source of all the MOSFET you can see it here and this center tap of the transformer is my positive which I will con connect the positive of the switch to this uh, 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 center tap now it is connected now then my negative of the oscillator will be connected to the negative yeah the last thing now is this um feedback so this particular point from the oscillator which is this and this these two diodes will be connected to the uh it sync this particular point and this particular point Now my feedback is connected already, you can see from feedback here, then I have the first one connected to this point, I have the second one connected to this point. So guys, now that the inverter is completed, I'm going to put it to test with this small battery. I've connected an 100 watt bulb to the output of this transformer. Now this is the 
negative of my inverter connected to the negative terminal of the battery this is the positive terminal so i will also connect it to the positive terminal of my inverter so this is the switch you can see the 100 watt bulb is glowing i can switch it off see my oscillator you can see the led is, is glowing here that the uh, inverter is working and everything is working perfectly perfectly so the 100 watt bulb is working as it is now if i connect a socket to this terminal i can connect my tv i can connect my fan and it will work perfectly so please guys subscribe to my channel to see more of this i'll be uploading more of uh, creativity video like this and i want you to enjoy my videos please subscribe to my channel thank you